I had Natsu from Fairy Tail up for a vote a long time ago, and a lot of people wanted him, but unfortunately he didn't win. However, I've been getting plenty of requests for him, so I think it's finally time we dive in, because this is D&D Build, where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons characters, and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. The anime Fairy Tail is very heavily magic based, and Natsu is a very dragony focused character from the show, so there's definitely going to be a bit of a theme for this build. First things first, we have to pick a race, and one while I was very tempted to go with Dragon, especially because of a few moments on the show, most of the time he does appear as a very normal human, so we're gonna choose Human Variant. This allows you to choose one skill and one feat, but we're gonna save both of those for a little later in this build. Then we get to choose a background, and we're gonna take a hint from our Naruto style builds and go with Faction Agent because you're part of the fairy tale guild. This gives us two skills, but we're also gonna save what skills we get slash choose for a little later as well because this default gives you the skill insight but if we get that skill from somewhere else we have the flexibility to be able to choose a different skill from this background and this build overall isn't going to be crazy optimized so i need to optimize a few things where i can even if it's just with the skills now it's time to sort out those starting stats natsu is actually really strong but for the build we have to pull off here we're gonna wind up mostly dumping strength bringing it down to eight then we're gonna take our dexterity bring it up to a considerable 14, and similarly, we're gonna bring our constitution up to 14 as well. Then we're gonna dump our intelligence, because that's not gonna be the primary focus of this build, and then we're gonna take our wisdom and put 13 points into it. This is mostly so we can pull off some multi-classing, because you're required to have 13 in the main stats of any class in order to multi-class in or out of it. Then we're gonna bring our charisma up to 14, because Natsu is pretty darn charismatic. That leaves us with one point left over using point buy from the player's handbook. So we'll just go ahead and throw it into strength, bringing it from an eight to a nine. Then we have two points we can choose from being a human variant. So we're gonna boost up our dexterity and our charisma both to 15. I know that makes them odd numbers, so it's a little less useful in fifth edition, but we'll go ahead and fix that a little later. Now it's time to choose a starting class. Real quick, so I'm not interrupting the build too much. I'm RJ, this is my channel where I do all this D&D stuff. And I worked with an awesome designer to make some more D&D or tabletop role-playing specific merch. It helps support this channel and I'm really excited about it. So if you want t-shirts that say things like, this is how I roll, showing off that you can roll three nat 20s in your next D&D session, or you want intelligence is my dump stat, or you really want to let everybody know what it truly feels like to roll a nat one, or plenty of other merch that I'll be coming out with as time goes on, feel free to check it out. It's in the link down in the description and I'm hoping you might enjoy some of it. But before we take too much time for that, let's get back to the build. And Natsu fights with both fire and his fists. So in order to sort out that fighting with your hands thing, we're gonna go ahead and start off with the class, Monk. When you choose Monk at first level, you get access to simple weapons and short swords, one musical instrument. So we're gonna go ahead and grab bagpipes for that fairy tale theme song. You get saving throws and strength and dexterity, and then you get to choose two skills. So between the two skills we get here, the one skill we get from being a human variant, and the two skills we get from our background, we have plenty to choose from. So we'll just go ahead and start off with acrobatics and insight. Choosing insight from our class gives us a bit more flexibility with what sort of skill we can choose from our background, because our background was gonna force us to choose insight. But since we already got it from our class, we have a much larger variety at our disposal. It has to stick to mostly non-physical skills from our background, so we're gonna grab intimidation and perception, because perception is always useful and intimidation just kind of feels right if you knew that you're going up against Natsu. Then we have one skill left from our race, so we might as well just grab Arcana because you're using plenty of magic, so you might as well know a bit more about how it works. When you choose Monk at first level, you get access to Unarmored Defense. So now your armor class equals 10 plus your Dexterity modifier plus your Wisdom modifier. And considering Natsu is pretty regularly just going in bare-chested, I think that works. Additionally, at first level of Monk, you get Martial Arts. So now you can use dexterity instead of strength for any attacks using any monk weapon or your unarmed strikes. And on top of that, your unarmed strikes get boosted from a basic one damage to a D4. And that D4 dice gets upgraded as you level up in monk. Finally, martial arts also gives you the option that if you take the attack action with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action for free. Then once you hit second level of monk, you get access to key. 
The amount of key points you have is always equal to the amount of levels that you have in Monk, and you can spend it on things like Flurry of Blows, making it so you can make two unarmed strikes as your bonus action instead of just one, Patient Defense, so you can take the Dodge action as a bonus action on your turn, or Step of the Wind, so you can take the Disengage or Dash action as a bonus action on your turn and your jump distance has doubled for the turn. Additionally, at second level of Monk, you get unarmored movement. So your movement speed is boosted by 10 feet while you're not wearing any armor or wielding a shield. Then at third level of Monk, it's time to choose a monastic tradition, otherwise known as a subclass. And like I said, this is gonna be a very dragony focused build. So we're gonna dive into the D&D book, Fizban's Treasury of Dragons, and grab the subclass, Ascendant Dragon. When you choose this subclass, you get Draconic Disciple. So you get a Draconic Presence. So if you fail a Charisma Intimidation check or a Charisma Persuasion check, you can use your reaction to re-roll the check. And this is actually gonna be pretty useful because our Charisma is pretty decently high. Additionally, this grants you Draconic Strike. So when you deal any damage with an unarmed strike, you can change the damage type to Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Poison. And most of the time we're going to be focusing on fire because that's most of what Nazu does, but he does get some lightning abilities at a certain point in the anime, so you have a little flexibility here. And finally, the Draconic Disciple feature also grants you Tongue of Dragons, so you can learn to speak, read, and write Draconic, as well as one other language of your choice. Additionally, Ascendant Dragon also grants you Breath of the Dragon. So you can channel destructive waves of energy, just like a dragon. When you take the attack action on your turn, you can replace one of your attacks with an exhalation of draconic energy in either a 20 foot cone or a 30 foot line that's five feet wide. You get to choose the damage type, whether it's acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison, forcing your enemies to make a deck save, and it deals two rolls of your martial arts die, or half as much if they succeed on the save. And this is a pretty decent feature because it replaces just one of the attacks on your turn, it deals two rolls of your martial arts die, and this doesn't really cost you any key, at least if you're only gonna use it a couple times, because you can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. But if you have no uses left, you can spend two key points to use the feature again. But I wouldn't really waste it on this too many times. Additionally, at third level of Monk, you get deflect missiles. So you can block away projectiles or even throw them back at your attackers. Then at fourth level of Monk, you get access to an ability score improvement. So we're gonna go ahead and boost up our dexterity by two points because it helps pretty much everything Monk related. Additionally, at fourth level of Monk, you get slow fall. So you can take a little less falling damage and you can role play this by blasting the ground with some flame to slow your descent. Then at fifth level of Monk, you get your martial arts die upgraded from a 1d4 to a 1d6, which is definitely very helpful. And it's even more helpful because now you get the all important extra attack. So you can attack twice as your action and twice as your bonus action if you happen to use Flurry of Blows. Then 6th level of Monk would grant us key empowered strikes, but we don't really have to worry about that too much because we don't have to worry about our unarmed strikes being magical because they can already turn into elemental damage, which will get past most resistances anyways. And we would get from Way of the Ascendant Dragon wings unfurled so you can sprout some wings, but only until the end of your turn so it's not super useful and we'll figure out a better way to get wings in just a second. Because instead of taking 6th level in Monk, we're gonna do a multi-class. And we gotta make sure we use that charisma, so we're gonna be multi-classing into Sorcerer. When you multi-class into Sorcerer, you get plenty of spell casting, but we're gonna save all the spells for the end of this build. Additionally, at 1st level of Sorcerer, you get a Sorceress Origin otherwise known as a subclass. And like I keep saying, this is gonna be a very dragony build, so we're gonna choose the Sorceress Origin Draconic Bloodline. This allows us to choose a dragon ancestor. And most of the anime focuses on Natsu having more of a red dragon theme, so that's gonna be our dragon ancestor. This feature means that we'll focus more on the damage type of fire, and whenever you have to make a charisma check while interacting with dragons, your proficiency bonus is doubled if it applies to the check. And lastly, from first level of this subclass, you get Draconic Resilience. So that Draconic blood is just flowing through you, and your hit point maximum is increased by one, and is increased by one for every level you take in this class, which is the equivalent of having two more points in our constitution. Additionally, parts of your skin are now covered in a thin sheen of dragon-like scales, which feels very true to the anime. So when you aren't wearing armor, your armor class equals 13 plus your dexterity modifier 
which is actually going to beat out our unarmored defense that we get from being a monk. So that's going to be our primary source of armor going forward. Then at second level of sorcery, you get Font of Magic. So you get sorcery points, and your sorcery points are always equal to the amount of levels that you have in Sorcerer, which you can trade some sorcery points for spell slots to do more spell casting, or you can trade spell slots for more sorcery points, which you can use on things like Meta Magic, which you get at third level. Meta Magic allows you to alter spells in particular ways, but we'll dive into all of our Meta Magic options in just a minute. Then at fourth level of Sorcerer, you get access to another ability score improvement, so we're gonna throw one point into Dexterity and one point into Charisma, making them both even numbers and much more useful. Then at fifth level of Sorcerer, you get access to third level spell slots, and then at sixth level of Sorcerer, you get another feature from your Draconic Bloodline, Elemental Affinity. So when you cast a spell that deals damage of the type associated with your Draconic Ancestry, you can add your Charisma modifier to one damage roll of that spell. And at the same time, you can spend one Sorcery point to gain resistance to that damage type for one hour. Then at 7th level of Sorcerer, you get access to 4th level spell slots. And then at 8th level of Sorcerer, you get another Ability Score improvement. So let's boost up our spell casting a bit by boosting our Charisma by 2 points. Then at 9th level of Sorcerer, you get access to 5th level spell slots. And then at 10th level of Sorcerer, you get to choose another meta magic on top of the two that you got to choose at 3rd level. Then at 11th level of Sorcerer, you get access to 6th level spell slots. And then at 12th level of Sorcerer, you get another ability score improvement. So we're going to boost up our dexterity by 2 points because it's going to help all of our monk stuff and our overall armor class. Then at 13th level of Sorcerer, you get access to 7th level spell slots. Then finally, at 14th level of Sorcerer, you get another feature from your Draconic Bloodline, Dragon Wings. So you can finally have a permanent flying speed. You can create these wings as a bonus action, and it's always equal to what your current speed is. So that speed boost you get from being a monk boosts your flying speed as well. Then at 15th level of monk, you get access to 7th level spell slots, and that brings us to 20th level overall. So now, it's time to dive into some of those meta magic options. We're going to be focusing most of our spells and abilities all around fire magic. But Natu does gain some additional ability from more of a lightning-focused dragon, as well as kind of a dark flame dragon as well. But to make sure we cover our lightning aspect, we're going to grab the meta magic option, Transmuted Spell. So now we can focus much more on one type of spell damage and just try to focus on the best spells we can grab. And if we want to alter it and make it a bit more lightning focused, we can use Transmuted Spell to turn fire damage into lightning damage, or if we find a really good lightning spell to do the opposite. The other meta magic option I'd grab right away is Twin Spell. So if you have a spell that would target usually just one creature, you can now target two. And finally, the meta magic option I would get at the higher levels is Heighten Spell. So you can spend three sorcery points to force a creature to have disadvantage when you really need to blast somebody and you're really hoping they're going to fail on a saving throw. Now it's time to dive into all those spells that you're going to use meta magic on. We're going to try and cover most of the spells here, but if you want the full spell list, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below. And we got to start with the cantrips. We got to grab some fire stuff. So we're going to grab Firebolt, Green Flame Blade, and you are human. So imagine just having a bit of flame in your hand and you can use something like control flames or light so you can actually see a bit better in the dark. And if you want something lightning focused, grab shock and grasp. Then when it comes to first level spells, there's really only one to grab and that's burning hands just to blast out a bunch of fire damage. Then when it comes to second level spells, we gotta grab agonizer scorcher and scorching ray because they're very blasty fire stuff. And if we want a bit more of that like dark flame ability, you can grab shadow blade. Then when it comes to third level spells, of course we gotta grab fireball, one of the best spells in D&D when it comes to fire-based stuff. Follow that up with Ashradol and Stride. So you just have billowing flames blasting out from your feet, increasing your movement speed by 20 feet, and damaging anybody you fly past with fire damage. Have some circling fire around you with Melf's Minute Meteors. And then if you really want a line spell that does lightning damage, do something that's a bit more continuous than Lightning Bolt and grab Wall of Fire from 4th level. If you want to alter it to be more of Lightning Bolt-esque, you can just transmute that to Lightning Damage. Then in 5th level spells, 
I'd grab Immolation just to engulf somebody in flames. Then once you get to six level spells, there's one lightning focused spell that you just can't avoid. And that's Chain Lightning. Because you can blast somebody with very intense lightning damage, dealing 10d8 lightning damage, and then that lightning jumps to as many as three other targets. But you can also just as easily alter that to be fire damage with your transmuted spell, like you're blasting somebody with a firebolt and that fire explodes and splashes onto other people. The other six level spell I'll grab is Investiture of Flame, just to breathe yourself in fire and be all fiery and stuff. Then when it comes to seventh level spells, it's pretty obvious to just grab Firestorm. It's the most fiery spell you're gonna be able to pick up. And then once you get eighth level spells, which is the highest level spell you have access to, unfortunately, I would grab Incendiary Cloud, just creating a constant sphere of just pure fiery damage. That's all of the spells we would have access to, but there's one feature we haven't touched on yet, and that's the fact that we get a feat from being a human. With all of these fire-based spells, there's a high probability that your dungeon master is going to throw something at you that's going to be resistant to fire, because they might be tired of dealing with your crap. So to help combat this, I would pick up the feat Elemental Adept. So when you gain this feat, you get to choose one type of elemental damage, which obviously we're going to choose fire, and any spells that you cast ignore any of your enemy's resistances to that damage type. Unfortunately, this does specify that it's spells that are cast, so if you're still punching somebody and hoping to deal some fire damage, you can't get past that resistance then. But that's okay, you can still just do basic bludgeoning damage in that situation. And on top of that, any spells that you cast, if you're rolling a bunch of dice, any one on the dice can be treated as a two. So you have a higher minimum of damage that you can deal. You're actually allowed to take this feat multiple times for multiple elements but we're only gonna do it once. That completes this build. I've had plenty of requests for this one, so I'm happy I finally was able to get it out. Let me know what you think about this build, if you think there's anything you do differently, or if you think it's awesome, or it sucks, or whatever. And if there's any other builds that you wanna see in the future, let me know down there as well. If you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, I have them all on both D&D Beyond and in PDF form over on Patreon, where all of these incredible people have access to them, especially the very incredible player character level patrons, OK Guggle, Andrew Nobles, Alex, Isabel Walker, Melinda's Robinson, Carcat Kitsune, Z13, Yaksha Senpai, The Dino 21, and Benjamin. Then going above and beyond that is all my Dungeon Master level patrons that I go ahead and play D&D with over on Twitch and then upload that session here on YouTube. Cyber Society, Talon Starkey, Braden Aldridge, Daniel Galvin, Michael, Eric Wade, Salvador, Kilo Kilo, and Heyo. And then going above and beyond anything I could have possibly imagined is my God tier level patron. And that's game stake. I cannot thank him enough. I try and give him some extra benefits from doing so, but no matter what, I just can't thank this person enough. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And finally, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, which, by the way, we now have merch. So you can check out our This Is How I Roll line and show off that you're rolling three nat 20s, especially if you're playing as Natsu from Fairy Tale in Dungeons & Dragons.